Welcome boys and girls. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a disc brake conversion on our full floater 14 bolt rear axle for the square body. Along with the disc brake conversion, we're gonna be installing these flexible brake lines from off-road design, and we're gonna be completely rebuilding the hubs too with new bearings and races and seals. So it'll be step-by-step -step to make this process as easy as possible for you guys. So let's get into it. Before we fully get into the disc brake conversion, I'll show you guys everything that comes in the lug nut 4x4 kit. Uh, we'll start off with the hardware. Uh, I got longer wheel studs for aluminum wheels. Uh, it does come with all 16 of them. And then I got the weld on brake line tab um, option so I could just tack weld them to the top of the housing to hold the brake lines in place. I did get the upgraded seals because I wasn't too sure how the sealing surface on the axle was, if it was pitted or not, but these upgraded seals should work extremely well, even on pitted axles, from what they say. And then here is the hardware to mount the uh, caliper brackets to the housing itself. It came with a set of banjo bolts and uh, copper washers to mount the calipers to the or to mount the brake lines to the calipers. Uh, it came with calipers. I got the coated option just to help with, you know, uh, have them not get corroded or rusty or anything. And then it came with brake pads. So I got the upgraded brake pads. And then I got just the regular soft brake line option because I'm going with the brake lines, the soft brake lines from Off-Road Design. These ones go straight from the distribution block and bolt to the caliper. So I don't have to worry about flaring hard lines or anything like that. And these are DOT approved, so I shouldn't have an issue with them at all. Um, does come with rotors. You could go with standard rotors or slotted rotors and drilled. I just went with the standard because I mean, disc brakes all around in this giant brake setup should be more than enough to stop the tires that we'll have. And I did get started on rebuilding one of the hubs already, but I'll show you how to rebuild the other and put it fully back together. Uh, it does come with bearings also, uh, you know, the inner and outer bearings for each hub, but I have one set in here and then I have a, the other set in the freezer, so it'll be easier to install them. But here it is, kind of fully set up I got to press in the wheel studs the rest of the way but you see the bearings inside of it and the seal and then I will flip this over a little bit and show you guys that's how it is on the hub that I uh, cleaned up and painted so it should be a pretty straightforward install I already got this one built but I'll show you guys how to build the other one and then we will get this axle fully put back together with disc brakes well, I got the bolts taken out of both sides of these axle shafts. So I'm gonna throw on some gloves, grab some rags and pull out these axle shafts, wipe them down some so they don't make a big old mess. And then we'll start tearing into these drums. All right, so checking out this hub, it is disgusting in there. I mean, there's a lot of junk and a lot of just garbage. So I'm definitely gonna be tearing this thing apart and just cleaning the crap out of this housing after I tear these hubs off and everything. Just kind of give this thing a makeover because I, looking at it, I doubt it has ever been gone through since uh, 1986. So yeah, I will be uh, tearing this thing apart and cleaning it up real well. All right, well, I got the spindle nut taken off each side of the axle and also the diff cover so we could check everything out. I'm having my pops come on out here to help me hold down the axle so I could pull the outside of the drum brake off without this thing flying around the shipping container. All right, I got the backing plates off completely and checking out the mating surface between the seal and the axle itself right here. There's no pitting, it's not nasty at all. So luckily I did buy the uh, upgraded um, seals from Lugnut 4x4. So in case this was pitted and really nasty, but it is not. So I lucked out with that. 
Um, everything came off really easily. No rust, no garbage like that. It all worked out really well. So I'm gonna clean these up in the morning. I'm gonna make this look really good. And then I threw the drums and the hubs outside to uh, hammer out all the studs and then hammer the hub off of the drum itself. All right, good morning, you guys. I had a little bit of coffee. And now it's time to keep wrenching on the axle. Well, we got the axle fully painted up. I'm gonna let it dry for a while and then I'll pull off the rags and uh, I'll pull off the tape and everything so we have a good clean surface for the hubs. But let's tear into these hubs, get them cleaned up. All right, well, I picked this one up and it won't fall out of there, but I got the, all the wheel studs out of it. Then this guy came right off. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I won't need to hammer on this one at all. But uh, I'll flip this one over, hammer on, hammer on it a little bit and get that hub out and then we're good to go. We can start cleaning these up and uh, start replacing bearings. Good to go. All right, this might be a little crude, but it worked. Uh, I stuck to stick the hub underneath the front of my shipping container. Stick a crowbar in there. Yeah! Got that seal out. That works out perfect. So the cool thing about 14 bolt hubs is once you get the seal off, the bearing just comes right out. You gotta kinda pry the race out, but that won't be too bad to get out. But the bearing itself just kinda flops out. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest, but there is a lot of gunk in there. And I got new bearings with the kit, so might as well get them in there. Um, my plan is there's a lock ring on the inside here of the hub. You can't see that, but so it goes the bearing, the race, then there's a lock ring for the outside of the hub. And then for the inside, there's a race and then a bearing, then the seal. So I got the bearing and the seal, or uh, I got the seal and the bearing out. But my plan now is I'm going to take the lock ring out from the inside, save that because I need that for the next um, setup or, you know, new setup. And then I can use a punch. I have a few punches here to get the races out of the hub just from the outside. I'll flip this thing over and hammer it from the outside like that to, to get all this out. So that's kind of the plan. I won't mess with this race for now, but I will get the, uh, the other bearing out and then I can hammer out the two races. All right, I got the bearings and the races out of the first hub so that one's good to go and now i will hammer out the second one all right so we're rebuilding this hub i already rebuilt one of them i just got to get the lug studs pressed in but i'll go through the steps on how to get it built to make it as easy as possible first thing i did was through the bearings and races in the freezer they were in there for like a week so they're nice and cold it should uh constrict the metal so it should be a lot easier to get it pressed in with the punches and what I also picked up was this is a three pound dead blow hammer. And then I got the punch set from Harbor Freight. Um, this actually came in really clutch for installing these bearings and races. And then also I got some gear oil just to help lube everything up. So everything slides in a lot easier. So we'll bust this bearing out of there and how it goes is the wider side so not the concave side that goes in first just like this straight down in there then the race will go right on top of that and it gets to a certain point and then you got to use the punch to to get it in there and then that's when i take the gear oil and i just run it around the entire outside of the race and then as i'm using the punch it gets in there a lot easier and you only have to go to a certain point where the snap ring goes. So if you go just right below that snap ring that's, that goes in there, it'll be perfect. And then you could put the snap ring in and then I could show you what to do from there. All right, I got the snap ring down in there and seated in place. So now what you're supposed to do, let me flip this over, it's a little oily, is take the race now, is you're supposed to take the race itself and push the race back with the punch till it meets that snap ring. So luckily the smallest punch out of the kit from Harbor Freight 
it fits between the bearing and the race in these slots no problem so since it's already lubed up yeah just get the uh punch in there smack it a few times to just push it back against the race and then the front bearings are fully done and then we can put in the back ones all right so i got the second bearing and race out of the freezer get that out of the way this one's a little different what you do with this guy is this doesn't matter you put this one to the side and this race installs the uh contact surface side out towards you i guess kind of like that so get it started with your fingers get it pretty level and then i just took some gear oil and went along the inside there and then from there should be good to go and since you don't want to scuff this surface at all so you got to be extremely careful with this because if you hit this and you scuff it or score it then it's going to prematurely wear out the bearing so you'll just want to go i go or i went with like one of the smaller punches and i just kind of kept it at an angle on the inside of the hub and i just worked in a circle like that and then i just was extremely careful with it so you know i didn't scuff it or scrape it and then i was screwed so I'll just go extremely slow with it. This is the hardest one, in my opinion, to install. But yeah, just go real slow with it and get it down in there. And then there is a little ledge on the inside of the hub where the bearing uh, race will see against it. So you only have to go a certain amount. And then from there, you'll just drop the new bearing on top and then you'll do a seal. So I forgot to tell you guys, but there is another lip in here that the seal seats fully on. So what I did was I just took the punch and I just barely got it on the edge between the lip and that, and I just gave it the smallest taps to just start creating a gap in there. And then you could take the punch again and just work around in a full circle tapping it. But you don't have much more left. And then from there, you install the seal and you're good to go. All right, so we got the race fully in there as you could see maybe it is seated and good to go so just take the bearing slap that bad boy in there then it's time for the seal what i did just to make it a lot easier is i just put some oil some gear oil on the outside of the seal and on the inner ring got it started with my hand smacked it down a little bit and then i used the dead blow to just smack it around in a circle and get it pushed all the way in there and then you're good to go well, the hub seal's all the way in there and we are good to go. So I'm going to drop the rotor on there, get the wheel studs just at least started in there. And then we'll put that to the side with the other one. And then we can uh, move on to painting the uh, brake caliper brackets. So we've got the hubs rebuilt. I got to take them to my work and press in the wheel studs and those will be good to go to install. But in the meantime, I'm going to paint these caliper brackets. Uh, the body of the truck is going to be root beer brown. And then a lot of the stuff is going to be gloss black underneath. And I'm going to be accenting like the suspension brackets, these caliper brackets, and a few other things like the diff covers. This Kona brown. I figured this darker brown and then the slightly lighter root beer brown and the black axles and drive shafts and all that should really go together and look good. So we're going to clean up these caliper brackets, then throw some coats of paint on them. Cool, I'm liking how those are coming out. Uh, I got a little bit of dust on them. I guess that's whatever. But yeah, I will uh, give these a while to dry. Maybe do another coat, let them dry for a while longer, and then I'll flip them over, paint the backside. Then they should be ready to bolt up to the axle. All right, I'm back home from work. I got the wheel studs pressed in on both of them, and these are good to install. They look really, really good. I'm happy with how they came out with me painting them. So I am extremely happy with that. The next thing is I actually did mount up the disc brake, the caliper brackets, and this is the Kona Brown that I bought. Kind of looks like a chocolate brown, which I'm pretty happy with. That should go good with the root beer color that I'm going to paint the body of the truck. The next thing is 
before we put on the rotors and the hubs and run all brakes and everything is I need to weld on these brake line brackets. So I have a bracket for each side of the axle tube there. And then on the side of each leaf spring perch, I'm gonna put a washer just so it'll redirect the brake line from right here, run it through the washer, the bracket, and then up to the distribution block on both sides. So we got that next. And then from there, we could start throwing the rest of the stuff on this axle. All right, well, those are welded on. I know it's not pretty, but they will hold. That's all I care about because it's just holding a brake line in place. So I'm not complaining about it at all. It uh, should not have an issue with that. You like my welding Crocs also? But yeah, those should hold. Zero issues. I'll just get them cleaned up let them cool down a little bit more and then from there we'll throw a fresh coat of paint on it and then we could get into installing the hubs and rotors well throw a coat of paint on the brackets and everything that i hit with the grinder last night so we are good to go with these tabs they are not going to go anywhere so the next step is before I bolt these spindles on or the hubs onto the spindles, I'm gonna to try to clean out the axle tube the best I can. And then from there, we could get to mounting on the hubs and the disc brakes. I've cleaned out the axle tubes the best I can. Now it's time to mount the hub and the rotor onto the spindle. So what I'm gonna do is just put some gear oil all over where the bearings will go. And then I'm gonna put some gear oil on the outside or inside of the seal itself just to make pushing it on a lot easier. Then once we get this thing on here, uh, we will use the Rough Stuff Spindle Nut Kit to torque down this, uh, this hub and rotor. I don't need a ton. I just gotta get it nice and covered. And then I'll do the same thing for the seal. Cool. Pop these gloves off. All right, let's get this bad boy on there. Okay. Come on now. All right, it's a majority of the way on here. I'm gonna take the dead blow hammer and tap on it just to push this on the rest of the way. Okay. okay that seems like it is yeah that's all the way on there cool that bad boy's all the way on there now we'll get to installing spindle nut kit from rough stuff so with the spindle nut kit from rough stuff it comes with three nuts well two nuts and then a key to hold everything in place this first nut you put on there actually does have a little, I don't even know what that is, little nipple that comes off of it to key onto this key to help hold it on there. So what you do, you do this one first and I'll just get it started by hand. Try to get it going at least. So what you do with these also is you, um, in the beginning, you torque it to 50 foot pounds and then you back it off a quarter turn and then you torque it down to 30 foot pounds. So I'll just get it finger tight on there. All right, so once you're finger tight on there, you'll take your torque wrench and torque it down to 50 foot pounds and then you back it off a quarter turn with the torque wrench and then you snug it down to 30 foot pounds. Then from there, We'll put the key on, we'll keep going from there. Okay. 
Okay, just clicked at 50. Now let's go from, I don't know, right here, quarter turn, and then take your torque wrench, loosen that bad boy up, go down to 30, tighten it up, You gotta stand on the pinion. All right, there's 30 foot pounds. I had to stand on the pinion so the whole thing doesn't flop forward. Okay, so you hold that in, got that in place. You also spin it while you're torquing it up and see if everything feels smooth and nothing's binding. That actually feels really good. Nice and smooth. I did put a good amount of gear oil on the bearings before I threw it on here yeah that feels really good so you got to put this nut on next and there's a little nipple on the first nut that will go into one of these holes and then it is keyed for the spindle itself so get it lined up you got to move the hub also to get it lined up and it is not perfectly lining up with the little nipple that is on the first nut. So what you could do is just back it off the smallest amount to make everything match up and you should be good to go. So it would be right below 30 foot pounds, but that is perfectly fine. Then from there, we'll throw on the last nut. So we backed off the first nut a little bit and then now we have the washer on there, keyed up on the bottom and keyed up on top. So we're good to go. We're gonna take that last nut and torque it down to 30 foot pounds then this side will be done all right we got the other hub on and spindle spinning freely so we are good to go here next step is put on the calipers so i'm going to bolt on the calipers and then run the soft brake lines up to this point and then we'll bolt them to the distribution block and we should be done with this project so we just got the caliper on now my plan is i'm going to run the brake line through the tabs that I welded on, get it ran across there, and then from there we'll bolt on the brake line to the caliper just like that. And with this flexible brake line kit from Offroad Design, it comes with all of the hardware too. So it comes with the copper washers and the nut and everything or the bolt, the banjo nut that is. So um, they give you an option on Off-Road Design's website, I think for what size of banjo nut. This is the 10 millimeter banjo nut. And then I got the calipers from Lug Nut 4x4 without the um, parking brake. So this 10 millimeter option banjo nut from Off-Road Design fits into the caliper without the parking brake from Lug Nut 4x4. So we got that good to go. You know, maybe get the, the distance I want, maybe like that. I could snug this down, get it nice and tight. And then from there, we could do the other side, make a match, and then I could do all the fittings for the distribution block. All right, boys and girls, we have all of the brake lines ran. So calipers are on tight. Brake line put on with the copper wa uh, washers. Everything ran through the tabs. Got the distribution block all put in there on a modified tab that I took off of the old rear axle. Got all the lines tight, so we are good to go. This part will bolt to the frame of the truck, then that We'll use one of the diff cover bolts to be held in place. Run it across through the spacers and over to the other caliper. So we're good to go. This uh, disc brake conversion is done. It is looking great and we are good. So if you've gotten this far, I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will have links below to everything I used in this video. 
and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.